Hi Steve fans and welcome back. Here in the UK we're anxiously awaiting the OK to travel abroad and one of the hotspots for many divers wanting a quick and easy getaway to warm clear waters will be Malta and Gozo. To further up the excitement levels we thought we'd focus on these tiny Mediterranean islands in the first of our mini destination guides. So whether you're a first time of thinking of visiting or a veteran of many dive trips there, stay tuned to find out what Malta and Gozo have to offer you. For those here for the first time, my name is Mark, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Scuba Diver Media Brand and welcome to the Scuba Diver YouTube channel. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future videos and ring that bell so you get notification of the latest releases. Also don't forget to check out below how you can get a free digital subscription to any of our magazines. That's Scuba Diver UK, Scuba Diver Australia and New Zealand and Scuba Diver Destinations which is our US and Canada edition. And if you want to get your hands on a print version, we've got a special subscription deal just for our YouTube followers. Now, let's dive into that video. The Maltese Archipelago has long been a firm favourite with British divers and for good reason. It's only a two and a half hour flight from the UK, the water is warm and clear, the climate is hot and sunny and the locals drive on the left. Combine this with accommodation to suit all budgets, a myriad variety of restaurants and bars to choose from, not to mention a rich history and plenty of land based attractions for non-divers and dry days and it is easy to see why so many people flock to this part of the Mediterranean on a regular basis. Malta is blessed with some natural underwater topography that amazes divers such as the double arch at Chikawa and the caves at Garlapsi but it is the wreck diving which has put the island on the map. Malta boasts dozens of shipwrecks, both artificial reefs and genuine wartime disasters or maritime mishaps in depths ranging from just a few metres to full on technical depths. Wrecks such as Ilmel Farood, Rosie, Imperial Eagle, P29, HMS Maori and HMS Stubborn grace the pages of many a logbook. Nearby Gozo doesn't boast quite so many shipwrecks, though it does have a few, including the Camino Land and the Cowella, but it's the natural underwater attractions which bring divers to this little island. The Blue Hole and the Inland Sea are two of the most famous sites, but there are plenty of lesser known caves, swim throughs and caverns which will enrapture even the most jaded veteran diver. Tiny Camino can't compete with its near neighbours for shipwrecks, though it has got the P31 patrol boat which is the sister ship to the P29 at Chikawa but it has some superb shallow lagoons that are ideal for beginners and some interesting caverns and caves for the more experienced to explore. This multitude of dive sites are well matched by a vast array of land based attractions from quaint villages, historical cities and ancient monuments to water parks, mountain biking, paragliding and other extreme activities making the Maltese archipelago the ideal venue for a family holiday, a romantic getaway for couples or an action packed group trip. So that was a quick overview of the island. Now let's get down to details. First Malta. Now Malta is undoubtedly the shipwreck capital of the Mediterranean boasting a whole host of sunken metal including some huge artificial reefs. Malta was quick to realise the value of artificial reefs both as an attraction for divers and also as a habitat for marine life and one of the first wrecks sunk way back in 1992 was the tugboat Rosie which now sits some 135 metres off Marfa Point at the north of the island. Resting perfectly upright in 36 metres fully intact apart from engines and prop this little 40 metre tug is one of the most photographed wrecks on Malta. Because of its compact size it's possible to get the entire wreck into one shot. Surrounded by marine life and its decks are covered in scorpion fish so watch your buoyancy. Nearby is a patrol boat P29 sunk in 2007. It's not been down so long obviously but it's already festooned with marine growth. It sits shallower than the Rosie and it's great to explore and a great first wreck dive for novices. Many of the wrecks in Malta are accessible from the shore but the Imperial Eagle can only be reached by boat. 
The Imperial Eagle was one of the ferry boats connecting Malta and Gozo before it became an artificial reef. And it now lies on a sandy bottom at a depth of 42 metres, just 300 metres northeast of Quara Point. Close by is a statue of Jesus Christ. This 13 ton statue was relocated here in May 2000. It was originally sunk near St Paul's Island and blessed by Pope John Paul in 1990 to protect the fishermen of Malta. The X127 is reached from Manuel Island in Marmoset Harbour. You get to dive a World War I and a World War II vessel in a single dive. The X127 is a 24 metre landing craft built in 1915 in the UK for the Royal Navy. She was then converted into a water lighter and then later again into a fuel lighter. It was sunk in March 42 and for many years was known as the Carolita or the Coralita by divers who referred to it as an ordinary barge. But in 2003, an underwater survey identified it as a lighter. One of Malta's most famous wrecks lies in St Elmo's Bay. The HMS Maori is a 115 metre long World War II British destroyer. It was sunk in the Grand Harbour by a German air raid in February 1942. It was raised in 1945, but it split in half, and the fore section was scuttled in its current position in St. Elmo Bay. It now lies at a maximum depth of just 16 metres, making it a genuine wartime shipwreck that can be explored by all levels of diver. Although her shallow depth means she has suffered somewhat at the hands of winter storms, the Maori is still an impressive dive site. It's half buried in the sand, but there's still 40 odd metres of the forward superstructure still recognisable. And while the guns were removed soon after she sank, they actually used them on land as a shore battery, there's still much to find, including hatches, gun mounts, bollards, cables, anchor chain and loads more. The undoubted jewel in the crown though of this artificial reef program has to be the 115 metre, 10,000 ton Umel Farood. The vessel has a tragic history. A terrible explosion on board killed nine Maltese dockyard workers and for three years it lay in the harbour of Valletta. In 98, it was granted a new lease of life as an artificial reef and now lies on a sandy seabed. The port side is usually teeming with large schools of sea bream, parrotfish and silver sides. There's usually a massive shoal of barracuda patrol in the waters above the wreck and occasionally it's visited by amberjack and tuna. The top of the bridge comes to within 18 metres and the main deck's at 25 metres, making it the perfect depth for divers. Penetration is possible throughout the superstructure, but only for appropriately trained, experienced divers, of course. There are natural sites too. Galapsi is a site that ranked highly on the top dive list of one Jacques Cousteau. It's a large natural swimming area, popular with general tourists and snorkelers, but it's also the entrance to one of the most picturesque cavern systems on the island. After kitting up in a car park at the top of a steep slope, thankfully it's equipped with steps down either side, you trudge down to the water's edge and then you just do a giant stride into the blue. The water is only shallow, a few metres at most, but once you make your way over to the corner, you drop down under an archway and enter the cavern system proper. Light streams down through holes in the rocky reef above, especially in the afternoon, so torches aren't really necessary and there is a reasonable amount of room inside. There are various exits and when you pop out onto the outside of the reef, you are faced with huge boulders, beds of endless seagrass and that lovely deep blue that characterises Maltese waters. Next, let's move on to Camino. Tiny Camino nestles between Malta and Gozo, but it has its own identity and attractions, including the famous Blue Lagoon. Although not strictly a diving destination, the fabled Blue Lagoon, which is a sheltered inlet of shimmering aquamarine water, is the perfect spot for some snorkeling in between your dives. If you're up for a shallow dive, in deeper sections of the lagoon, you can find various fish and creatures mooching about on the sandy bottom. The famous Santa Maria Caves are a system of large cathedral-like caves and interconnecting caverns well lit by natural light, with only a couple of places where it's momentarily dark and it might be worth taking a small torch with you. More to peer into nooks and crannies than anything and you'll find cleaner shrimp and crabs. Most of the bigger caves are only semi-submerged and tourist boats often cruise in and out. So make sure you stay close to the bottom and aware of surface traffic during the dive. You're enveloped by shoals of sea bream when you first enter the water and during your safety stop. But throughout the dive, you can find grouper, lizardfish, octopus and sea stars. 
but it's the topography of the site that really holds your attention and it's a safe and shallow introduction to this type of diving. Lantern Point is a boat dive and it starts from a shallow rocky shelf at 6 metres where the boat usually anchors. In this area divers will find the entrance to a chimney, an almost vertical tunnel that drops down to 16 metres. The tunnel's wide enough for divers to manoeuvre without touching the sides, which is good because they're usually covered with fireworms. Don't want to touch fireworms. Outside the tunnel and slightly to the right, divers can enjoy a maze of swim throughs underneath the massive rock, where starfish can be seen. Behind the large rock there are boulders giving way to a gentle slope that drops down to about 50 metres. Nuts and crannies close to the seabed are home for large grouper and the occasional dentex. As well as these natural attractions, Camino now has its own shipwreck in the shape of the patrol port P31. Sunk on the 21st of August 2009, this Condor class mine sweeping vessel now sits in just 20 metres of water. Perfect for all levels of diver. Penetration is possible and because it was thoroughly cleaned of any potential diver snags before sinking, it makes a great first wreck dive. Last but not least, Gozo. Gozo has recently gained a couple of artificial reefs, but its real selling point is a vast array of awe-inspiring natural underwater attractions. Dredger Point is one of the most spectacular dive sites on Gozo, with deep water down to 60 plus metres and many caves and arches. The most dramatic is the 35 metre long tunnel that opens from the inland sea to the open sea, where the bottom just drops away. The clear waters and the depths can be deceptive, so watch your depth. Close by you have the Blue Hole, which is located at the bottom of Dredger Point. It's a shore dive, which is reached via a fairly difficult walk over rough coralline limestone. However, steps have been carved into the rocks leading down to the Blue Hole. This is a natural rock formation carved out over centuries by wind and waves, and it goes down to depths of about 26 metres. The hole is about one metre above sea level and no more than 10 metres wide. And however, once you get down a few metres, this gives way to unlimited access to the sea because there is a huge archway. A large cave can also be found at the bottom of the hole. Also in this area is the chimney, which is entered one diver at a time through a fissure in the almost vertical rock. This opens up at a depth of about 8 metres. Wrecker Point is found at the northernmost tip of Gozo. The beach road is rough and the entry is tricky with an often sw strong swell, but it's a fantastic dive well worth the effort. The reef consists of a parapet at a depth of 30 metres and then a drop off down to 60, but there's an excellent vantage point at 15 metres. You can hover here and you are surrounded in a cloud of small fish feeding on the nutrient rich waters, and large shoals of dentex have feeding frenzies here and there's large plentiful grouper. Billingshurst Cave is also found to the west of Wrecker Point. The top of the cave entrance is just above the surface and the bottom is at 27 metres. A long tunnel called the Railway Tunnel leads to another cave deep inside the rock where divers can surface. Entry is from Wrecker Point. Immediately inside the cave there are plenty of red sponges, soft corals, cardinal fish and other types of marine life. On the way back the sight of the blue open water with the sun shining through from the outer reef is breathtaking and perfect for silhouette photographs. Schlendi Cave is found in Schlendi Bay. It's best to swim across the bay either on the surface or underwater and the maximum depth is maybe 12 metres. The cave is a bent tunnel leading to one side to another on the rock wall. At the entrance of the cave floor you can see goatfish, damselfish and cardinalfish and the walls are brightly coloured with starfish, sponges, algae and bristleworms. Further on in the tunnel there are large boulders and it gets progressively shallower. Towards the end of the tunnel the seabed is covered with smooth rocks and shingle. Fungus Rock is a huge rock in Dresja Bay on the western coast of Gozo. Access is only by boat and the average depth is about 40 metres. This isolated rock has a hole running through its northern part. Underwater the scenery is just as impressive as above with vertical walls, fissures, gullies and caverns created by boulders which provide excellent habitat for the largest grouper. Looking upwards you can often see tuna, ambertack and barracuda. The walls of the rock are covered in algae, sea urchins, tube worms, starfish, bristle worms and sea potatoes with a brilliant red colour. Gozo is not without its wrecks however and in August 2006 it gained two artificial reefs, the Carwella and the Camino Land. The 48 metre Carwella and the 34 metre Camino Land are both former ferries and they now sit upright in more than 30 metres of water and both offer fantastic opportunities 
for penetration. So that's the diving cupboard, though there are many, many more sites I have not mentioned, including several technical depth shipwrecks. Malta Goes Own Camino also offer a wide variety of attractions and activities to keep you occupied when you are not underwater. Malta is blessed with over 7,000 years of history, meaning the cultural attractions to visit are abundant. The megalithic temples, including Giganto, which at 5,500 years old are the world's oldest freestanding structures, predating the pyramids of Egypt and Stonehenge in the UK, the Knights of St. John's significant sites, World War II sites, and historical reenactments are a must. Interactive walkthrough and multimedia attractions offer an overview of Malta's history in under an hour, and are a great way to learn what visitors will be looking for later. Malta's capital, the World Heritage City Valletta, and the medieval fortified towns of Emdina, also known as the Silent City, and Citadella on Gozo are the island's historical highlights. Slima, Bajiba and St Julian's in Malta, and Marsalfon and Schlendi in Gozo are the main resorts. They bustle with activity and not just in the summer. Valletta is a cornucopia of European art and architecture. This city of the Knights remains virtually intact, its streets flanked by palaces and tiny old world shops. Across Grand Harbour lie the three cities, Sangalia, Coscopia and Vittoriosa. Older than Valletta, they offer a fascinating insight into the island's maritime fortunes. The southern fishing village of Marsaloc and neighbouring resort town of Marsascala are also worth a visit. There are some 365 churches throughout the island and all offer something different, but the Mostar church is a must-see and is famous for its large dome, which is the third largest in Europe. Gozo's Baroque Cathedral, a masterpiece designed by Lorenzo Gaffer, the Maltese architect who was responsible for the magnificent Cathedral of Emdina, is also well worth a visit. If you have the family in tow, there's plenty to keep the younger ones entertained. You can pay a visit to Sweet Haven Village, also known as Popeye's Village, and explore the set of the late Robin Williams live action movie from way back in 1980 that was based on the antics of the popular cartoon character. The Mediterraneo Marine Park is a great way for all ages to learn about the marine world and its inhabitants. And nearby, the Splash and Fun Park is a monster water park, offering four chutes, a large whirlpool and bump boats. If the children love Playmobil toys, they'll definitely want to visit the Playmobil Fun Park in Halfar. This is one of the company's largest manufacturing units, with the entire range of toys on display. And there's also a small play park as well. If you want to enjoy the scenery, there's plenty to catch your eye. Dingley Cliffs are an impressive sight, especially if viewed from sea level on an island cruise. From the cliff tops, one of the most striking views and sheerest drops is just west of Dingley Village. Another atmospheric view is over to the uninhabited island of Fifler. The tiny chapel of St Mary Magdalene, perched on the edge, marks the highest point on the Maltese Islands, some 250 metres above sea level. If all that sounds a bit too tame for your liking, there are plenty of more extreme sporting activities on offer, including mountain biking, rock climbing and paragliding. If you can't tear yourself away from the water, you can always take a boat trip to the Blue Grotto. This natural, picturesque grotto and its neighbouring system of caves mirror the brilliant phosphorescent colours of the underwater flora. Elsewhere, you can try kiteboarding, go windsurfing, try water skiing, or just head out to a quiet bay and relax in the warm shallows. As I mentioned at the start of this video, the Maltese archipelago is very popular with British divers and it's easily reached from the UK, with various airline companies running flights into the country from a range of the regional airports. It's worth noting it's also only a short flight from most mainland European cities as well. You can visit Malta and Gozo all year round, but be warned, the summers are extremely hot. Spring and autumn are a good time to visit, as the topside temperatures are a little cooler, but the waters are still pleasantly warm. Even in winter, topside temperatures are mild, and you can dive in a 5mm or 7mm wetsuit, although many prefer a dry suit for comfort. You can rent a car to explore the islands, and daily rates range from 16 to 28 euros, and as you drive on the left, it will be instantly familiar to UK drivers. However, be warned, an off-quoted anecdote is that Maltese drivers drive in the shade. Another option is to use the extensive public bus service. This is cheap and accessible, and the modern fleet of buses are comfortable to ride. 
When it comes to accommodation, you have a plethora of options, from B&Bs, apartments and guest houses, to villas, farmhouses and hotels, to suit every budget. The electricity supply is 230 volts with a 3-pin rectangular plug system as used in the UK. Malta and Gozo use the Euro as currency, though many places will accept credit cards. So that's our mini destination guide to Malta and Gozo. Have you dived the islands? What are some of your most memorable dives? Leave your comments below and if you've got a question, fire away. Because if we can't answer it, maybe someone in our community will be able to. If this has inspired you to travel, check out the link below and see where your next adventure will be with Paddy Travel. It's 10% on average cheaper than Booking Direct as well as offering special deals. You get exclusive benefits such as free Dan insurance. There's detailed information on all their dive packages so you can pick what is right for you and it offers secure seamless online booking. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ring that notification bell so you know when we will put up a new video. And don't forget, you can grab a free digital magazine subscription in the description below. As always, stay safe. And if you're going diving, enjoy.